Hi everyone, I'm here with my second Roxane Gay review in a short period of time, this time on her other highly praised nonfiction work, Bad Feminist. The other book by her that I read was her memoir, Hunger, and although that book shares some stylistic similarities with Bad Feminist, Bad Feminist is also fairly different, as I'll discuss in this review, including in its format, since this one, Bad Feminist, is an essay collection. So Bad Feminist was published in 2014, before Hunger, and it's really a hodgepodge of Roxane Gay's reflections on a variety of different topics, all of them insightful and some of them very much so. Although the collection has feminism in the title and thoughts about feminism do characterize many of the essays, it's a rather loose theme overall, and a few of the essays are not particularly focused on women's struggles, but more on just Gay's own experiences. As the author tells us in the introduction, she is a bad feminist. To very briefly paraphrase, she feels feminism is a complicated and multifaceted term, one that's built around some fundamental ideas, but that has been described in many different ways, some of which she agrees with and some of which she disagrees with, or others that are just hard to live up to even if she agrees with them. Therefore, rather than try to be a card-carrying feminist in whatever the ideal feminist is supposed to be like, uh, if there even is such a thing, Gay is going to settle for being a bad feminist, an idea that I quite like and would aspire to be myself. As such, this collection contains feminist ideas, but is hardly the go-to work for learning about feminism in some academic sense. Gay's essays, even when venturing into quite detailed critical analysis of media and culture, still remain fundamentally accessible for a general audience, never veering into academic jargon or esoteric discussions. And I very much appreciate that. It's clear she knows her audience here, and I suspect that in many ways her work serves as a bridge between the more esoteric ideas discussed by sociologists in academic texts and her readers, most of whom are probably not reading those academic writings, at least not often, and I'm including myself in that group. Having already read her later memoir, Hunger, which she published three years later, this collection feels in many ways like a precursor to that book, uh, attesting the waters as she built the confidence to release something as deeply personal as Hunger. While Bad Feminist covers a range of different casual and serious topics at a level that is personal but not quite so intimate, Hunger really delves into her own personality, her trauma, and her fears. One essay from Bad Feminist in particular about her experience attending a fat camp as a kid almost reads as the skeleton of what would eventually become a full-fledged book in Hunger. I don't mean to imply, though, that there is too much overlap between these two books, because there really isn't. I found that rather than repeat one another, they tend to complement each other. Um, so I think listening to them side by side worked quite well for me. It's also hard to recommend one of these books over the other because they're both good in their own ways. One is more emotional and vulnerable, and the other a bit more detached and sometimes a bit more fun. One is a shorter but continuous story, and the other a collection of lots of mini-episodes that are only loosely related. Still, I will make a recommendation because I can pretty confidently say that I liked Hunger the best, and I think that's the one you should read if you pick just one. Roxane Gay's sort of unapologetic nerdiness comes across in this book and will be endearing and relatable for many readers like me who spend a lot of their free time watching people talk about books on YouTube, among other things. As she breaks down literature of all varieties, from the kind of frivolous Sweet Valley High books that she admits were nevertheless a formative and influential part of her life, and the Hunger Games series, of which she admits to being a huge fangirl even as an adult, if that's the right word, um, and then she moves on to more serious and literarily acclaimed texts like the novel Green Girl by Kate Zambrano and Play It As It Lays by Joan Didion. In some of these essays, Gay gets quite analytical in her interpretations of these books and in the connections she draws between them and our lives. In fact, I much appreciated her opinions because Roxane Gay is clearly a voracious reader, and she even posts a lot of insightful reviews on Goodreads. I actually started following her reviews after reading these books because it seems she pretty much always has something interesting to say about everything she reads. Beyond books, Gay also clearly enjoys her share of TV, and a lot of the cultural discussion in this book revolves around the wide variety of shows that she watches. Although I'm not a huge TV watcher myself, I found that her discussion of women in reality TV shows and the sort of shows they put on themselves there as a sort of microcosm of the performance of womanhood within broader society was really interesting and well done, and especially impressive given that this was one of her essays from this collection that had a more academic feel to it. Also, in the section about fat camp and losing weight, she briefly references her thoughts about the spectacle and the sort of commodification of weight loss in shows like The Biggest Loser or Extreme Makeover Weight Loss Edition, which she doesn't discuss in that much detail in this book, but later will form a really interesting and important section of her memoir in Hunger. 
Certain sections of this book fit a clear theme. There's a group at the beginning about several of the author's own personal experiences, then a group of essays about literature and popular media, a group about sexual assault, and a group specifically about representations of black people in TV and film. The sections in which Gay plays cultural critic are where I think she's at her best. She presents some insightful thoughts about feminism, including the idea of being a bad feminist. Uh, some of these thoughts aren't particularly new or original, but they don't really claim to be. Instead, some of these sections just read more as commentary, her chance to put in her own two cents on a hot topic. A few of the essays, though, don't feel quite so much like they have a natural place in the book, which is maybe to be expected given the diversity of topics Gay covers, but the result is that while some of the essays really shine in and of themselves as a single thesis, others feel pieced together in a way that feels discursive at best and confusing at worst. That is, the individual paragraphs or groups of paragraphs that Roxane Gay writes are always well written and contain clear enough ideas, but then these ideas don't always fit together, and thus sometimes it can be hard to tell what she's getting at with the essay as a whole. For example, one essay that I found frustrating was one where she attempts to take on this question of what topics should be off-limit for jokes because they're simply not ever funny. This is a really interesting question to discuss, uh, but in her essay she straddles sort of a strange line where she suggests that the funniest jokes are the ones that push up against the boundary of what's acceptable and aren't afraid to uh, really be risky, but then she kind of reverses course and implies that uh, there certainly is a boundary and it's really not funny when you cross it. In fact, it even harms people. By the end, it's not clear to me whether she's made up her mind about what's fair game for jokes, which is fine, but it's also not clear that she realizes she's presenting it in such an inconclusive way. Even the story she uses as an introduction to this section, one about a classmate of hers in grade school, a sort of class clown who was ostracized one year for making an off-color joke on the day of the Challenger explosion, never is fully explored in the rest of the essay and feels only loosely related. Certainly among other things, in this story her classmate was using humor, clumsily of course, as kids do, to try to diffuse or process an awkward and uncomfortable, even a tragic situation, which is very human and at the same time can be very hurtful. None of that is explored in this essay, though. Instead, we jump right into the topic of grown-up comedians making jokes about sexual assault, which she never really contrasts with the joke made by her classmate, even though, at least to me, these two types of humor, or whatever you want to call them, are vastly different. So that's just one example of an essay where I don't think the individual ideas really fit all together as coherently as I hoped for. Anyway, I think I'm just going to leave it at that for A Bad Feminist by Roxane Gay. I did enjoy hearing what Roxane Gay has to say, especially at her best moments. If you think you might be interested in this book, I'd recommend it. And since it's a collection of essays, you could even browse the topics and chapter names to see if any catch your interest. For example, I didn't say anything about the competitive Scrabble essay, but that one was one of the most lighthearted and really my favorites in the book. Roxane Gay has also written some fiction, although I haven't heard as much about that. If you've read any of it yourself, let me know whether you recommend it in the comments. Um, also, if you enjoy this review, don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time, bye and happy reading.